Hey guys, I'm back with the last video of Unit 2, and it's going to be talking about cell communication, and it correlates with Chapter 11 in Campbell, the ninth edition. So, you know, why is this important? Well, let's look at it a little bit. First, there's a thing called a signal transduction pathway, which simply means how signal signals are relayed, relayed from cell to cell, and then how that signal is transmitted or translated into a cellular response of some sort. I mean, why does it make a cell to be able to break down glucose or, or glycogen into glucose? Or why does it release a hormone or go through reproduction? Or what does it do? So there are basically two types of signals. There's local signals, which are short distances, like in the paracrine, system, paracrine uh, signal, such as growth factors, or by the synaptic system, which would be like neurotransmitters. And you can see both of those down here at the bottom. Um, the first one, the growth factors, would be like a vesicle that's releasing hormones that are hitting several target cells. Um, the synaptic system, the neurotransmitter, would be between neurons or between nerve cells. That, remember, signals, as they, travel down, as they travel down a nerve cell, they are electrical signals. When they get to the end, they have to change to a chemical messenger, which moves across the synapse a very short distance, but then it keeps, it keeps transferring that signal. Now, long distances are transmitted by hormones. Um, the cell may create the hormone, put it into your blood system, bloodstream. The bloodstream will carry it to wherever that target cell may be, wherever it may be in your body. So that's the trans signal transduction pathway. Now, when we talk about the signal transduction pathway, we have to bring into a, a account a man named Earl Sutherland. Uh, in 1971, he mapped out um, how this actually works. And what he did was he, he noticed that epinephrine being produced by a cell caused the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. But if you put epinephrine into a test tube with glycogen alone, it had no effect at all, and it didn't break it down. So that brought him to two things, that epinephrine was not causing the breakdown of glycogen directly, and that the plasma membrane must be involved somehow because it's receiving the message of the epinephrine, and then it's changing that message to make it break down glucose. That, so that was the first step to realizing that there are three stages in cell signaling. There's the reception phase, the transduction phase, and the response phase. The reception phase is exactly what you think. It's whenever the cell detects um, the signal. So that's going, to be term that's going to be happening on the outside of the cell, on the pl cell's plasma membrane. Then you have the transduction, which can be either one step or many steps, a cascade of steps, as we may say, um, in which that signal is transferred or translated at different times from one cell to another. And then you have the actual response, which is the chemical or the cellular response that you're looking for. So let's look first of all at the transduction. Um, the transduction, we often talk about protein phosphorylation. Uh, that's simply whenever protein is turned on or off by the adding or subtracting of a phosphate. This phosphate often comes from an ATP molecule, so it does require energy, but when the energy is released, that phosphate being released causes the protein to be activated. Now the way I like to think of protein phosphorylation is this. When you add that phosphate to that protein, it's either going to do one of two things. Uh, it's going to change the shape of that protein and activate it. And if you took it away, it would change that shape of that protein back where it would deactivate it. Um, and if you remember, protein structure is directly related to its function. So that kind of makes sense. Now, in the Earl Sutherland's example, you know, the epinephrine wasn't directly causing it, so it had to have some type of second messenger that carried it from one cell to another or from one place to another. So there's these things called second messengers, which are non-protein signaling pathways, which help transmit the message on until it finally gets to that cellular response you want, to, want it to be. Now, the secondary messenger in Earl Sutherland's uh, experiment or activity was cyclic AMP, which I have down here, which it, we, it was later found that it helped transmit the message from the plasma membrane all the way to the liver cell to help break down that glycogen into glucose. Now finally, after you get the transduction, you have the cellular response. The cellular response is, you know, it can be a lot of different things. It can be cytoplasmic activity is regulated this way, cell metabolism regulated this way, 
Uh, nuclear transcription, you know, the copying of DNA can be regulated this way. And it's just, you know, after these cascade of responses during the transduction phase, then you actually get your cellular response. All right, I know that was fast and furious, but that's basically cell communication in a nutshell, and I hope that helps you. I'll see you tomorrow.